Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the shape generators inside of Tinkercad. And we're going to take a look at one in particular. So the way you get there is you go up here and select basic shapes or the pull down right here next to it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go down to all shape generators. And then we're going to scroll down. You notice there's quite a few of them, but we're looking for one in particular. And that one is the circle array. And so what we're going to do is we're going to pull the circle array onto the work plane and we're going to drop it. Now, one of the things that you notice is that it has a number of objects rotated around basically a circle. In this case, it's a square. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we can do with this. So the first thing when we go over here to its control panel, we see that it, it, we have squares, circles, triangles, or custom profile. And so we're going to change it to circles, and notice these are turned to cylinders. Now for custom profiles, you can actually use this uh, working plane here to actually change the shape of these objects into irregular shapes. So I'm not going to go into that in this episode, but just know that's what this is for. Now what I'm going to do is to show you another aspect of this. I'm going to turn these into triangles because we also have direction. Now for cylinder, it really doesn't matter, but for something like a triangle, Currently, right now, we're pointing inside. So what that means are these points are pointing inside. We can change them to point outside and see how they've changed. And then we can also change them to point south, so they point downward. Uh, for this case, I'm just going to turn this back to, to a circle. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just say point inside, which is not going to make a big difference. Uh, also, once we drop down here, number of copies, so as you see as I increase the copies, the number of cylinders on my working plane increase. I'm going to actually go ahead and I'm going to just type in six here. So I want six, six cylinders. Now the other thing we can do is we can change the angle at which we place these six cylinders. So we can do a half circle or a full circle. We're going to leave this at a full circle. The other piece is we can change the diameter of these from you know, down to almost nothing to extremely large. And then the other piece, well, I'm going to go back here, sorry. Uh, I'm going to change this to, to back to 10 millimeters just for the grins and giggles. Uh, the other thing we can do is change the radius, is how far these are spread outward. Now, notice the size of this. So, um, the, this, the radius is the internal radius. And so, um, one thing you have to watch here is how um, you know big your object's going to get. So this uh, this I'm not sure how the exact ratio works because notice I'm at 65 and notice it's at 140. So it pushes out. So again, uh, I would measure this based upon the size you want it. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to create roughly a um, 100 millimeter ring. So now you notice that I'm at uh, 68 and, seven, and 77, and that's because notice how this is, uh, you know, kind of cubed off, where these are bumped out further, where these are a bit in. So, anyways, just something to keep in mind uh, when doing it. So I'm going to just go ahead and, and turn these into holes, and I'm going to be good with that for the time being. So now I have this round space set of cylinders that I can work with. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up here to my basic shapes and scroll up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a cylinder out. And as mentioned, I'm going to want to go, uh, I'm going to actually make this about 85 by 85. Just for grins and giggles and pull this over. So that should be pretty good. I want to have some smooth sides on it. So I'm going to kick this up and I'm going to lower this down to 5 millimeters because I don't need it to be that tall. And that looks all pretty good. So now what I'm going to also do is I'm going to bring in a, another cylinder and I'm going to make this 45, um, 45. And then I'm going to make this about, oh, 60 tall. And then I'm going to move this over here. And again, I want to kick up my sides from 20 to 64. And now I'm going to bring in a hole and I'm going to make this 40 and make this one 40 and I'm gonna make this 80 tall 
and I want some moose side, so I'm going to kick this out and I'm going to push this over here and I'm going to pull this down just a little bit. And so I'm going to highlight all this and we'll go to my favorite tool, whoops, align. And so I'm just going to align all these components. With this aligned, I'm going to select this and then now I'm going to join this. And boom, I now have a flange. Quick design, really slick. Now, if you try to go ahead and put these holes on here yourself, that would be a lot of work, a lot of math, and you see how the shape generator has shortened all that effort for me. So this is a real handy tool for creating flanges and other things like this where you need a certain set of holes around a circular uh, object. So anyways, hopefully you found this interesting and found it handy in your Tinkercad workflows. If you did, hey, give it a big thumbs up. Also, don't forget the swag shop up there in the corner. Let me know in the comments what your favorite shape generator is below. I'd be interested to hear. Uh, I'm going to probably do some videos on writing code for shape generators. This is done in JavaScript, and so I'll probably do a set of videos later. Uh, let me know down below, too, if you'd be interested in seeing those, see what kind of interest there are getting into a little bit of the coding of Tinkercad. And uh, hey, we'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.